You know, we take for granted the, the whole flush toilet that which I don't even use. I haven't, I, I don't have flush toilets here for, it's gone 42 years. What, what I try to do is share what I know um, and, and help people um, make their own decisions about how to manage their toilet waste and their other waste water. Mm -hmm. so, so you, Australia has some pretty dry climate there, doesn't it? For sure. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of variants in Australia. You know, it's a big country, so there's some really dry areas and there's some, and there's some areas with pretty high rainfall as well. Okay. Um, where we over, over here um, in the west of Australia, it's very dry um, and, and getting dry, you know, with climate change effects and stuff like that. Um, and it's a very um, resource-intensive water supply that we have here. We, we rely he pretty heavily on um, desalination supplies and groundwater supplies and stuff like that. So water is a pretty, I mean, water is a pretty precious commodity anywhere. But, you know, when you take into those, take into account those factors as well, it, it really makes sense to do what you can to make the most of the resource you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i've written down a couple of little things that i've taken out of your book the first thing that um that came up for me was a little fact that you've put in there that i that i actually didn't know and it's relevant to us in australia was that the um australian brush turkey makes compost <laughs> files and use them to take their eggs <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah i know i thought that was interesting because i Somebody, somebody wrote to me, I don't know, I can't remember how, but somebody sent me an email said, hey, you know, the Australian brush turkey, humans aren't the only people, only, only, you know, animals that make compost, the Australian brush turkey does. So I looked it up. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it seems like that's what they do. They pile up a bunch of vegetation and it, as it rots, it produces enough heat to to incubate the eggs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is amazing, amazing. It's, it's quite interesting, eh? Yeah, yeah. You know, there have been uh, a lot of uh, projects in different parts of the world that I've been involved with. One of my favorites was in Haiti. It was a school. It's kind of an eco, eco theme school for kids. Yeah, and uh, we set up compost toilets there and, and compost bins right behind the toilets, right on campus there. And they, they made gardens with the compost. Um, it was a perfect demonstration project. In fact, I mentioned it in, in the compost toilet handbook because the school was so successful and so well managed, uh, so sustainable that they were gonna use the school as a model for all the schools in Haiti. You know, what people don't understand is it's a loop, it's a closed loop. Yeah. You make the compost, you grow the food, you use the toilets. I mean, you eat the food, you use the toilet, you make the compost, you grow the food, you eat the food, you use the toilet. You know, it just goes on like that over and over and over again. Right. So I like to use apples as a uh, analogy because when, when you teach people how to make compost, it's like teaching them how to, how to plant apple trees, right? And so it takes a couple of years before you start getting a result. Yeah. So after a while, guess what? There's apples on the apple tree. Well, you didn't tell them what to do about that. You just taught them how to plant apple trees. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, now you got apples. Now, what do you do? It's like with compost, you teach them how to make compost. Now, you got compost. Yeah, now what do you do? Okay, so you got apples, right? The apples are falling on the ground, they're all rotting, you're not doing anything with them. They have to be trained or educated in what to do with the apples. There's lots of stuff you can do with apples. Once you learn all of that, you're good. You, may, you plant the trees, you learn what to do with the apples, you, you do those things with the apples, you eat the apples, 
make more compost, plant more trees, you know, follow the cycle. So when you, when you teach people how to make compost, then they get the compost. Now, what do you do? This ran into this in one village in Haiti. They made this hundreds of tons, hundreds of tons of beautiful compost. Well, but they didn't know what to do with it. Mm. They were displaced from the earthquake into this village and none of them were farmers or had gardens or, you know, uh, they just needed a little bit of training. That's all it would have taken somebody to go down, spend a couple of weeks with them, put the compost in beds or something and plant some stuff, you know? So they didn't have that training. And uh, so what happened was the compost just sat around, started growing weeds. And then some farmer came along and said, holy shit, I want that. And they bought it all. Mm. Yeah. They loaded the trucks and hauled it away. You know, and they got a hell of a deal on it, I'm sure. The magic is the compost. The compost converts everything into a different form that's suitable for my suitable for uh for plants really yeah yeah and that and that's where there's a bit of a gap i guess in in general public's understanding um around that conversion process you know how how does uh this composting process turn your poo into something else which is the compost yeah um, it's a very, it's an interesting process, but it's also very, well, it's complex and simple at the same time from, from my understanding. And it's a natural process and there's a lot of stuff going on, but it's quite simple to create the conditions where that, that complex process can happen. Exactly. Exactly. Well stated. And that's what I try to get across in my, in the humanor book, you know, yeah. that's the whole, my, my whole intention is to get people to realize composting exists. You can do it. Yeah. And it will recycle your crap. You know, first time I, uh, first edition, the humanor book was a graduate thesis. Mm. I was in grad school and I was doing, uh, uh, research for uh, a graduate degree and I decided to do a thesis on the compost toilet system that I had and that's when I, I had to do I had to dig up that information and that was before really be, just before computers started to uh, become a thing and um, so I, I was doing a lot of interlibrary loans and things like that where uh, you could uh, find these documents, but they weren't necessarily available in your local university library. You throw, uh, you know, tetanus or uh, polio or, you know, whatever, whatever the pathogen is into a compost environment, it doesn't survive. Mm. They're human pathogens. They don't. They can't survive in a compost environment. Compost. The compost environment is alien, and there's a whole lot of mechanisms that will cause a human pathogen to be killed. You know, to wrap things up a little bit, there was one little quote out of your book that um, that I can sum it all up in a pretty good way, and that is when a composting toilet user goes to the toilet. They aren't taking a shit, they're giving a shit. <laughs> I'm glad you caught that one. That's so... yeah. I thought that was kind of, I thought that was kind of clever myself. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. <laughs> <laughs>